Hey, good morning, Matt, and good morning from Arrowhead. We are currently standing by over at Gate 5, and look at all the cars. It is silent at the moment because everyone is gearing up to finally come inside. Like Matt mentioned over on his side of Arrowhead, about 10, 15 minutes ago, Gate agents walked out, told people who were out here tailgating, pack it up, you're going to be let in fairly soon. I spoke with one of the gate attendants out here, and they said this will be the first time in history that they've opened up more than an hour before gates are scheduled to open. So we didn't get an exact time, but indications are it's going to be very soon. We watched some of the gate attendants actually walking through the line kind of close to where we are, probably at least 10 cars back, scanning uh, the tickets, scanning the QR codes. That way, once we officially get the go ahead, we know that these trucks are just going to vroom right in, make their way over to their tailgating spots. And the biggest reason, the biggest indication for why this is all going to open up earlier than scheduled, traffic, of course. That always comes back to the traffic. We know one person waiting all the way back by the on-ramp is a girl known as Casey Potato Girl. You may have heard of her. We talked about her a lot this week. She's one of the hundreds of fans in line to get into Arrowhead today. And of course, we'll keep you posted as soon as these gates open. Live at Arrowhead, JBY, KBC 9 News. The one thing that uh, you can't help but notice is all of the wonderful art just as soon as you walk into the new terminal. Yeah, that's exactly right, Chris. I mean, we're standing in front of one of the most iconic pieces, really a fountain that draws you in to show Kansas City. And so we had the opportunity leading up to the opening of this new terminal to chat with several different artists. One of them is from Lawrence, Kansas, and her piece of artwork is just a labor of love. Take a look. As the wax heats up, I take the string and I uh, secure it to the to the wax. Bead by bead. You don't want to over saturate the piece with, you know, one particular type of bead. And so Mona Cliff, right. a traditional oh, Native American bead artist, that. is making her masterpiece, which will hang on the walls inside the new KCI terminal. Seed beads are such a prominent part of like our cultural identity, and I just wanted to make sure that I was also using those and utilizing those in a way that um, even if you're not familiar with our culture, you may appreciate it. The seeds sowing an image of a Kansas sunset. Gorgeous, you know, rich tones. But, which um, Cliff has learned to love after moving to Lawrence as a teen. I myself had come to Kansas from the Kansas City Airport, you know, so I feel like it's such an interesting experience. Like 17 years later, I'm like having my art at the airport now. Well, each piece of art in the new terminal will showcase different perspectives of Kansas City and the surrounding communities. I just really appreciate that they really wanted to have a breadth of, you know, a diversity for who they're representing, you know, to show everybody who comes to visit the area. Cliff hopes that hers will remind travelers to think of their past as they move towards the future. Through tradition and culture and my heritage that I'll be able to share a part of our Native community with, with travelers. Well, labor of love. No one knows that phrase better than the deputy director of aviation for Kansas City, Justin Meyer. It is opening day, about two hours until every flight has taken off, landed. I mean, what is going through your head today? Tired. We're all just so <laughs> tired. I think uh, most of the team from the airline side, the airport side, we've been awake for probably 22 of the last 24 hours, and everybody's ready to go to bed. I can only imagine. I mean, you've been working so hard for this moment for years. It's finally here. How did everything go? It went well. It was a successful day. I think there's certainly things that we had eyes on, signage, some minor mechanical issues. But all in all, planes took off mostly on time. Passengers seemed delighted with the facility, and that's a win for us. You were taking a look at video from the first flight out of the new terminal this morning. Southwest Airlines flight 904 bound for Chicago. It left the runway before the sun was even up. And now we're taking a look at the unique plane that was Southwest Missouri one. It was wrapped in the state's flag and I was actually on the first flight into the new terminal. It came back from Chicago an overnight layover. There was a big group of people on this flight. It was dubbed the last one out first one in. Take a look. Pulling up to Terminal B, it's a ghost town. Thank you. On the terminal's final night, is some stop to take photos of what was. In a minute. Okay. A mother-daughter duo is ready for what will be. What better opportunity <laughs> to do something silly with my mom than That's right. this and be part of history. History framed with custom clothes, cookies, and cokes. 
No better way to say bon voyage than with this celebration. Congratulations, must be a part of this history, so thank you all. Enjoy the ride. Touching down in Chi Town. Two, it's a commemorative three, photo. Yeah. Before travelers go their separate ways, some head into the city for the six hour layover. <laughs> while the mother daughter duo wait and wait and wait until finally. This is Kansas City. It is a celebration, so please celebrate. Good morning. Welcome aboard. Have a great flight. And as we taxied up to the brand new terminal, it was just surreal and exciting all across the plane. But as Bev and Liz say, it's out with the old and in with the new. It's yes. surreal. It's like we left as we knew it and arrive in this I feel like beautiful city. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like where am like, I? Is this our city? It's going to be a busy day at the new terminal. Yeah, the first flight in is coming from Chicago this morning and our Jamie Weiss will be on board. Let's get to her live at Chicago Midway Airport this morning. Jamie, good morning. What an exciting moment for these passengers. Hey, good morning, Cody and Donna. We are here at Chicago Midway. We are about an hour or so away from boarding our flight to KCI, the first flight to come into the new terminal. Now, I want to break it down for you. There's about two dozen of us that were on the last flight out of the old terminal, including Veronica and Jerry Sellers from Prairie Village. Now, none of us slept overnight, correct? That's right. We didn't sleep. <laughs> it wasn't worth it. <laughs> it wasn't worth it. So talk to me. What did you guys do? We landed just before midnight. What was the game plan? We were going to go to a speakeasy, but our son who lives in Chicago met us and we went back to his house, spent some time there and then went to an all night diner and got breakfast. Yeah, and came back. <laughs> and so we've been talking off camera about how this is such a historic opportunity to be the last ones out, first ones in. Why did you want to be a part of this? We've traveled in and out of KCI for so many years and lived with the old KCI. We're looking so forward yeah. to I the new. I was just on a trip last week and I thought, I'm not going to miss this. It was so crowded, congested, and I don't know. We just wanted to say goodbye to it one last time and also say hello to the new one for sure. <laughs> and last question before we have to go. There was a lot of fanfare when we left KCI. Mm -hmm. We saw some balloons coming into the desk here before we leave our flight in Chicago. What are you expecting when we land in the new terminal? Because you guys haven't been yet. Oh, I mean, I saw a video, so I know kind of what it's going to look like, but it'll still be different in person. And I don't know, I'm sure there'll be some kind of fanfare when we get there, but it'll be fun. And for me, it's just having amenities after you yeah. go through security. Right. I mean, yeah, bigger bathrooms. Yeah. <laughs> What's most important when you're traveling? Thank you guys so much. Yeah. We look forward to being on the flight with you. We look forward to sharing our experience with you. We'll see you coming up in the next half hour with more stories from here in Chicago. Cody Donna. KNBC News Jamie Weiss has been at the scene till, since early, early this morning. She's live with an update. Jamie, what do we know? Well, Cody, at this point, start of the 7 o'clock hour, the scene is officially cleared, cleared around 6.30 this morning. So here, Westport Ale House is where everything went down last night around 11 o'clock. Missouri State Highway Patrol say those three off-duty Kansas City police officers were serving as security guards for Ale House. There was some type of bar fight that broke out inside the bar. When it spilled outside onto the streets of Westport, gunfire rang out. After hearing reports of that gunfire and, and hearing it, that's when... Uh, Highway Patrol says those three off-duty officers began to fire their own guns as well. And Cody, like you mentioned, it's unclear at this point in the investigation whether it was those officers' shots or other shots that injured those six people. We know one of the six uh, was transported to a hospital and later declared dead. So we do know that those three officers involved, despite being off-duty, will be placed on leave, similar to how any on-duty officer would be placed on leave following a shooting. And the identities of those officers, as well as the victims, are not known at this time. Right now, 7 o'clock, uh, we are starting to see rush hour cars moving along Midtown at this point. The roadway had been blocked until about a half hour ago. They'd blocked off between 40th Terrace and 43rd on Broadway. Uh, all police have left at this point as you're walking around and just looking around Westport. It looks like any other Monday morning. The coffee shop down the road has already opened, so it, it doesn't look like how it felt even an hour ago. But of course, we're going to remain on scene, keep you posted about any updates as we hear them. We're live in Westport. I'm Jamie Weiss, KNBC 9 News.